The Tall Boy Experience. Tall Boy. Tall Boy. To introduce Liza Lonzo. He's, again, uh, someone who's done extraordinarily well. Young man from D.C., big heart for the community here. As you heard from Ivy, went to Howard, actually first went to Wall Street, but found his passion, found his genius in acting. And I always encourage young people, whatever that passion is, whatever that genius is, don't let anyone stop you and find ways to do that. He could have stayed on Wall Street, probably done extraordinarily well, but he found what was in his heart. Extraordinarily accomplished actor, but most importantly for me, someone who's very committed to giving back. Please give a warm round of applause to Liza Lonzo. How's everybody doing today? All right, now I know y'all are eating. But that's whack, because if we were at home coming right now, right? So I'm going to ask one more time, and I especially expect my A2 folk to make some noise up in this room. Yeah, all of that, hold on, save it. How's everybody doing today? That's what I'm talking about. We really, you know, uh, I, I'm very happy to be here, and everybody in this room should be very happy to be here because uh, when I attended an HBCU, and it wasn't that long ago, <clears throat> um, need some water. You know I'm from DC, water. Not water, water. Um, we didn't have, you know, the White House supporting HBCU initiatives. I mean, can we give it up to the White House and this administration? This is something that is extremely important, not just now, but for it to continue beyond this administration. Don't you agree? Yeah. So it's all, of our, it's all of our collective responsibility to insist that moving forward, this continues to be a priority for the Department of Education, uh, for, for this and future administrations to come. From action! We don't need to say much more than that. <laughs> Mr. Chaz Gibson, give it up. Okay, so let's open up the panel. I would like each one of you first to just give a little bit about your experience, both being at an HBCU and being an HBCU All-Star. What that means, and what that means not only on campus, but to the community surrounding your campus as well. So now you're pressing buttons too, bro. Come on, man. Good afternoon. Can y'all hear? <laughs> Had to be the brother from HU. Oh. <laughs> See, he wants to get on the podium. That's really what it is. He rocked the bow tie today. <laughs> okay, turn that on. Oh, turn the other one on? Okay. Oh. All right. Try it now. Good afternoon. Try the other one. Try the other one. Don't touch it. You got it. It's on. Good afternoon, finally. <laughs> my name is Chad. My name is Chad Tremaine Gibson, and I am a doctoral student at Howard University. What it means to me to become, be an HBCU All-Star is to demonstrate my passion for leadership and excellence and truth and service. Yeah. With that, I have maintained over my, gra over my graduate studies, I have maintained a, a, a stellar record of, of excellence by maintaining nearly a 4.0 GPA okay. for my graduate studies while also serving in multiple leadership capacities, for example, serving as the 2014-2015 coordinator of the Howard University Student Leadership Conference, additionally serving as a leader in my community by dedicating my weekends, every weekend, teaching and training and mentoring young African American males in the D.C. school system wow. to let them know that they too, they too can go to college and excel. So yes, I've committed a life to not 
enter into the prison pipeline, but the PhD pipeline. Well, take your time. <laughs> And that's important for others, for all my students to know. Additionally, I serve as a teaching associate at Howard University, where I teach undergraduate students in the School of Communications on a daily basis. When I teach them, I push them to nothing but excellence. And I tell them every day, there is no room for mediocrity when giving excellence. So, love it. Honestly, I was very impressed with everything that he said. Uh, I think you're right on target. You know, I mean, my only advice or my only words are is that uh, uh, you have a family of HBCU alumni that came before you, and however we can support you in what you're doing, reach out because we're there. Um, you know, we 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 all kind of as classes stay in contact with the class that we came up with, and and we all work. You know, in, in our in our own classes. You know, my, my group is the the late '90s group. You know, and we have our own little Facebook group. And whenever something's going on on campus and and we hear of it, you know, we try to help out or interject or however we can lend support. But you know, we're here. So that's. But as far as as advice, I think you got that under control. <laughs> Very impressed with what was said. My last yeah, question you. I have for you uh, for the media. Um, quite nicely, there's only very few media members here today for this part. But tomorrow there's going to be a large amount of people tomorrow. What advice would you leave to the media um, that, that missed out on this opportunity? You know, I'll tell you. Uh, I think I think uh, one thing that we have noticed and witnessed. Uh, 
is that we are our own media. We are our best media. Um, you know, a lot of the movements that have been growing within our community, I have found out about them online and on Twitter before it was covered in quote unquote the media. You know, so yeah, I mean, we can we can hope and wait for them to come cover things like this, but it is our job to get on social media. Everybody has 500, 600, 1,000 people to follow them. Some, some people have more. And, and it's our job to narrate our own experience, to give our own narrative of what this is and, and what our goals are. We shouldn't wait for someone to translate what we're doing here. We can do it ourselves and reach our people. Did you like the video? That's right. Did you like the video? Hit that like button. Hit the share button. Share it. Think big. Think tall. Think tall boy.